ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We seek his guidance, we seek his forgiveness Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one will misguide him. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends us to, he or she will find guidance nowhere. And I bear witness that there are no gods but God, the one, the creator, the sustainer, the most loving, the most rewarding, the first, the last, nothing before him, nothing comes after him. He created everything and he was not created nor was he begotten. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger, our role model, our guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to carry to us his message that is valid across all time and across space. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدْ As I come here and uh, thought about uh, and I come here, I thought of the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when he said, hearts are in the between two fingers and uh, the hearts are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he can flip them, switch them uh, as he wills. القلوب بين إسبعين من أصابع الرحمن يقلبها كيف يشاء And Allah, what that means is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says that nothing stays the same. Nothing stays the same. Even what you have in your heart doesn't stay the same. It can change, and it can flip, and it can switch. And of the dua of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he says, Ya Allah, make our hearts firm on believing in you and faith. So don't switch that on us. That because it could switch. You could have a strong faith at one point in your life, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala switches that, changes that. Uh, but so Allah says, Ya Allah, thabbit qulubana ala al-iman. That make our hearts firm on the faith. Don't make us uh, dislike belief. Don't make our hearts feel that faith in Allah or belief in Allah is heavy duty that you want to kind of give it away. You make our hearts loving it. Ya Allah, put in our heart the love of you and the love of your messenger, and the love of the believer. Ya Allah, make our hearts hate to disobey you. Make our hearts hate to disobey you. All of these are dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to making, making a call on Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to guide our hearts, to make our hearts firm, to make our hearts steady on the faith, on the guidance. And then they flip and they switch. Uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq says that, and he is the one that, uh, that the Prophet ﷺ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talked about his faith and belief, and he says that by Allah, if uh, my one uh, leg is inside paradise and the other one is still out, I don't yet have 100% confidence that I will make it to paradise. There is still a possibility that things could change that something of deep disease in your heart or, or deep, uh, a shaky belief or a shaky issue deep in your heart could come out in that instance of time and, and get you to do something that can pull you back or not make you enter paradise. The point is that we don't really, in our lifetime, as long as we are alive, we do not reach a steady state. We do not reach a ceiling that says, Alhamdulillah, now I reach a ceiling, now I am faithful, now I'm believer, now I'm entering in Jannah, let's seclude. That, that concept of that we're living in our life and now we're cruising till the end doesn't exist. Because there is always constant change, there's always constant challenges that will come, which means that you always need to be cautious, aware, thinking about where you are, what you're doing, and what you're going to be tomorrow, and guarding that faith, that love, that uh, hate of disbelief, that if Allah puts it in your heart, you want to guard it so that it doesn't go away. So the heart is, is an open system. 
Things could come in at any time and things can leave also at any time. So I reminded myself with this as I walked in here today and I wanted to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we forget to make the dua of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Ya muqallib al-qulub wal absal thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Ya Allah, Ya one who switches the hearts and switches the uh, eyesight to things that you look at, make our hearts firm on believing in you. Make us live our life faithful and end our life on the state of faith as you like of us. Don't take that for granted. I will continue today um, and I kind of made commitment to myself to look at the verses in the Quran and talk about them in my khutbah from last Ramadan till next Ramadan. So in one khutbah before I talked about Surah Quluhu Allahu Ahad Al-Ikhlas and today I'm just going uh, in, in that. So I'll talk about Surah Al-Falaq or the daybreak. Uh, Surah Al-Falaq, we all uh, probably are familiar with it. It's one of the small surahs that uh, um, people tend to teach their children from very early age. Uh, many of us probably have learned that surah at our first encounters uh, with Islam. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq. Uh, say, I seek refuge with Allah, the Lord of the day break, min sharri ma khalaq, from the evil of what he has created, wa min sharri ghasiqin ida waqab, and from the evil of the darkening night as it comes with its darkness, wa min sharri naffathati fil uqad, and from the evil of those who practice witchcraft when they blow in the knots, wa min sharri hasidin ida hasad, and from the evil of the envier when he envies. So it's a s small surah in uh, five uh, verses. And this surah uh, starts by asking us to seek refuge. To seek refuge meaning that something is coming after you. If something is not coming after you, why would you want to seek refuge? You don't need to seek refuge unless you something that is threatening you or something that has the potential to hurt you. And so the surah starts that seek refuge with the Lord who created. And the falaq here means something that comes out of something else. So it's a life that comes out of death or the day when it breaks out of night. So it's not just the day break, it's something that comes out of it. It could also be the creation. Um, that Allah is the Lord of the creation. He creates something out of nothing. There was... Uh, nothing and then he creates out of that. There is darkness and he brings back the day. The one who is able to bring something out of nothing is the one that you seek refuge with from the evil that he created. So the second verse clarifies that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and some scholars says that that means that um, in the, uh, the, the follow-up in the second verse, meaning that in falaq il means the creation, that the one who created out of nothing, seek refuge in the one who created out of nothing from the evil that he created. And this is, I wanted to kind of take some uh, time to reflect on this. It's just one word, min sharri ma khalaq, from the evil that he created. What could that evil be? That evil, um, sometimes we run through it, okay, there is evil around us, but that evil is actually very um, uh, elaborate and comprehensive. It includes, and some scholar says, includes the, uh, the animals in the forest. So you're in the forest or you're camping, and, or you're camping on the mountain, and a mountain lion will come attack you. So that's something that could come and harm you that Allah has created. It also goes all the way to a virus. So the virus, um, any type of virus, uh, flu virus or any type of virus or disease that Allah has created, uh, we went through the bird flu uh, kind of scare a couple of years ago and that is something that Allah created, you can see, you can touch, you can stop and it will come attack you and if it attacks you, it causes you harm to the level of cells inside the cells, cancerous cells. How can you, you can't even know that, you can't even see it coming, sneaking on you. You discover it after it harms you. And, and, it, and, you, and, and you say that you are lucky if you discover the harm early. 
then then they, maybe they can try to stop a little bit or do something of that. But that cells, it's inside your body. And absence of your awareness, it sneaks through your body, eat of your cells and develop itself. And, and you are completely unaware of what's happening here and there. And there might be things that happens in like that bird flu scale. It, it started, uh, the, the virus was created because of some things that happened across the ocean, uh, miles and miles away from us. But then within few days or weeks, it could come affect us here to where we are. So something that's being cooked somewhere could have an evil effect on you over here. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah says that if you try to guard yourself, yourself, and say, I know I, I, I'm not going to rely on the Lord who created things. Because the idea here is that who created all of those things that are evil that could harm you? Who created that animal that could come jump on you in your household or, or so on? Who created that cancerous cell that can grow and develop and, and attack you? Who created that virus that travels through the air? Who created the air or the birds that will carry it through and it, till it comes? It is Allah, the Lord who created. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ See, I seek refuge in the Lord who created everything from the evil which he created, from the evil that is there. So you say, so does Allah create evil? Why would Allah create evil and not just create uh, everything that is good and everything that is happy and we don't have to seek refuge, we don't have to worry and nothing would harm us now? Well, that is paradise, inshallah. So you go there and you go to paradise and you will not feel any of that evil, you not even find somebody who is saying harmful words to you that can put you in bed or put you through difficult times. But this life is a life of tests. This life is a life of challenges. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates things that put you through challenges. And put you through challenges to show how firm your faith and believe in Him. How much you will rely on Him. It's like something, and give the example, although the example is not really close, like you are going in the army, so somebody said, we want you to go, we're going to give you this armor suit, and this is a very strong armor suit, nothing will go through, but we want to see if you can go and stand on the front line. So it tests your faith that you're going to go through that armored suit or vehicle and says that, okay, I have my faith in that company and I'm going to go stand on the front line. Even if somebody shoots at me, I know that it's not going to harm me because I have that with me. And even if I am harmed, I am okay with it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he has the highest example. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there are challenges that will test your resolve at different levels. Sometimes it's a small level, sometimes it's just you uh, uh, had to walk back from home at night and uh, you had to drive through uh, a dark neighborhood that you don't know uh, anybody at or you had to walk through an alley and you have that fear inside of you or there's an incident that happened in your neighborhood and somebody got shot so you're walking back home and you have that fear that somebody will come and shot you or somebody comes in burglary in your house or something you have that fear inside you that that shakes you a little bit and tests your resolve all the way to be inflicted with maybe la Allah, yani may Allah protect all of us with a disease that comes sneaking on you or sneaking on somebody that you love. All of these things that Allah created, created to put a test that tests your resolve, tests your faith in Him, tests how much you are committed to believe in Him and how much are you going to go back to Him. And when you see that, to say, as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said when he was beaten up in an alley one time and went to the side and said, Ya Allah, if what happened to me is, is because you are angry at me, I am in big trouble. But if this because to test my faith in you, I am very committed to you. You see, so here, this surah, says that this is where you seek that strength in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I seek refuge in the Lord who created everything from the evil which he created. 
ومن شر غاسق اذا وقب there is the surah then uh, go from a general to specific so it spe- specifies out of the general evil that God has created three areas it's very interesting those three areas the first one the darkness and what comes through the darkness the darkness and what comes through the darkness and the second one is the deception of those who deceives and the third one the envy of those who envy those three are very difficult for you to even see it coming like sometimes you say well i'm gonna work out and i have alhamdulillah good muscles and i'm gonna have my gun with me and if i see evil coming i'm gonna protect myself those three you can't even see it coming the darkness here it could mean the physical darkness it could also means the unknown the evil that the unknown hides for you what do you know about the evil that could happen tomorrow what could know you know about an evil of a company of a, or a partner or a business that you're going to involve in that's unknown to you it's dark area for you so you seek refuge in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that evil from that darkness that you don't know that sneaks on you come to you from where you can see this is this is very important that, that there's evil that is waiting for you you can see it you can't protect yourself against but it is there waiting for you that's the darkness and what the darkness could hold for you what the unknown could hold for you that could harm you and the other one is the deception of those who deceives and the words here the nafathati fil uqad and the some scholar says that that's the witchcraft that's the people who do uh, magic or sorcery and so on but the point of that magic because magic is within is, is not something that changes the creation of allah nobody can change the creation of allah nobody can change the rule of allah but what magic does as the quran tells us about the uh, magicians of uh, musa of the pharaoh during the time of musa is that they deceive they create an illusion of something so you are confused you don't know what is real and what is illusion and that is deception that somebody frames to you a subject or frames to you a situation or frames to you a context so well that you can't really tell if this is imaginary or if this is real it's like 3d immersion like you know if you play 3d nfl games on those new sony playstations you can't really tell if those players if that's a real game or if this is an illusion it is an illusion it's not a real game but you look at them and say wow is that a game going on or if that's no and then you sign tell them, hey that this is just a playstation going on and you can't really tell it's a deception it's an illusion and somebody can come to you and deceives you well what is deception deception is somebody <coughs> making you believe that something is real where in fact it is not and you can't tell you have no way of telling the difference between the reality and the illusion because of how good whoever framed that for you how good they were and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says seek refuge in that those who sits down draw these programs creates these games creates those tvs for the purpose of putting you in an illusion so that you can see something that is not used not just tvs like tv is a tool that can be used for that but also words somebody can talk to you into something that's not this and somebody can do something outside behind your back that creates that illusionary situation الحمد لله وكفى وصلاة وسلاما على عباد الذين اصطفى ثم أما بعد. So I thought first that I'm just gonna do. Uh, I, I was asking myself, would I have enough time? Would would the Surah Al-Falaq be enough for the Jum'ah, or should I do Al-Falaq and Al-Nas together? And I just looked at the time, and I'm out of time, and uh, haven't even finished the fourth uh, verse. So I apologize for that. Um, the last verse to finish it is the evil of the envy 
when they envy. So the envy is a feeling that you have in your heart when you see somebody blessed with something. So somebody blessed with a strong, handsome, beautiful physical appearance, somebody blessed with intelligence, somebody blessed with successful business, somebody blessed with a nice home, somebody blessed with uh, intelligence, whatever that is, you have when you see, when you recognize the blessing you have, you have that feeling inside you. Now, it becomes envy when that feeling evolves into a wish that Allah takes it away from them. That becomes envy. So you have that feeling, you saw somebody blessed, maybe somebody riding a new car, and you look at that, wow, you start to have that feeling inside you, and that feeling says, why is he having that car? Oh, maybe he goes in an accident now, or maybe Allah should take away, he doesn't deserve this car. Uh, so you, that feeling evolves that you wish that Allah takes away that blessing from them, takes away that strength in the body, the beauty that they have, the wealth that they have, the oratory abilities that they have, the uh, experience, the successful business, anything. When, you, when that feeling evolves that you wish it's taken, that is hasad, that is the envy. So the envy, it's the, the funny thing about that is, so you're sitting there, Allah blessed you with something, you prayed, and you're doing great, and you're walking your way. You have no clue who's around you is envying you. You have no clue. It's evolving in somebody's heart. You have no clue whatsoever that you are sitting there at this dinner table with people that you think they are all your friends, and you are happy, and you have a bright face, and around the table there are three people that they wish you sickness that they wish that Allah takes away what is making you happy. You, you can't tell. You think they are your friends, your happy burger, or you bark your car in the parking lot and there are four other people seeing you walking in and you can't really recognize who is there that is carrying that feeling against you. It's completely absence of your abilities to even identify that evil. But then it comes and hurts you. Because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that that evil, that envy will come at you and hurt you. So how would it come at you and hurt you? We don't know. I don't think, I am not aware that there are scientific studies that studies how that envy translates into you. But I think many of you have experienced in your life after somebody visits your home, the water breaks in the basement and the TV broke, your, uh, your, your ankle uh, got twisted, you had to go to the hospital, you opened this new store, it got uh, fire, catch fire. You, you all have experienced some sort of evil that happens to you once people see a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for you. I, I was in Egypt over the summer, and I borrowed money from a friend of mine, so I went there and I gave him the money, and the next day, he called me and he was very anxious. I don't know what happened to me. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, you don't know what happened to me today. I said, what happened to you? He said, uh, today he was moving to a new house in the morning. So he moved to a new house in the morning, very beautiful house in the morning, then to went to the bank, took some money from the bank, rode his car back to the house, and in a while he went to say something to his family, five minutes came out, window broken, all the money is gone. So I, I immediately told him, Alhamdulillah, it came in the money. Because I immediately knew that he got, somebody envied him. You're moving to a huge house, you, uh, everybody knows about it. Something is gonna have to happen. So it happened in the money, Alhamdulillah, it's affordable. And I'm sure, like, how did it happen? Is it connected somebody? I have faith in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that envy hurts and you need to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the envy. To conclude, this is Surah Al-Falaq. Uh, I think it's Surah 113. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq. I seek refuge with Allah, the Lord of the daybreak. Min sharri ma khalaq. From the evil, what he has created. Very general statement. The ones you know about, the one you don't know. And then he specifies three areas of evil. 
the evil of the darkness as it comes with its darkness, the unknown, the things you can see, when, and the shalil nafathati fil the evil of those who practice witchcraft as they blew in the nuts, which is a general meaning of that, those who plot to deceive you and create an illusion so that you don't know what is real and what is not. وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ And from the evil of the envy, when the envy and the envy is a feeling that evolves in somebody's heart when they see a, bless, a blessing coming on one person and they wish that it gets removed from them. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me and you protection from the evil of the darkness, protection from the evil of deception, protection from the evil of envy. اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا وإلى طاعتك أعنا ومن كل شر سلمنا وإلى النجاح وفلاح وفقنا اللهم ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا رب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك واحفظنا واهدنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين اللهم انصر كل مستضعف وكل مظلوم يا رب العالمين اللهم خذ على يد كل ظالم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين بعظمتك يا رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين أمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وأقم الصلاة